People on the streets. And a dee da Welcome back to Life Lessons in Peril. Today we're going to be making sense of life through After Sun. It follows a father and daughter, Callum and Sophie, as they're on a father-daughter vacation together. Before um, she goes back to school. Before she goes back to school. It's maybe to celebrate Sophie's birthday. It does land on a summer holiday, so it could also be that. A lot of it's through the film recording because they're recording each other a lot with their old school video camera. That's about it. And it's the second time you've seen it. And you cried it. Why did you cry? <laughs> <laughs> to me, the movie is really about the complexities of the parent-child relationship and not about them just being at a hotel. Depending on who you are, you're gonna hate this movie because you kind of feel like nothing happens. The dad is, to me, a really good person who's trying his best. There's definitely a lot of sadness, regret, and mm -hmm. disappointment about his own life yeah. and what he can give to his daughter. He doesn't really go into detail about his upbringing, but we know that it wasn't a place that carried a lot of happiness for him. We get an idea about what kind of parents he had. When I was 11, nobody remembered it was my birthday. And when I told my mum, she was so angry, she grabbed me by the ear, and made my dad drive me to the toy shop, made me pick something to buy. That's a bit um, deep. You find out just how maybe abusive his childhood was when his parents forget his birthday and they treat him like he's the disrespectful one grabbing him by the ear. And the mother just gets angry just because yeah. the kid <laughs> reminded her of her duties yeah. as a parent. And, you know, you see him crying alone. You can tell that he's really sad. He's reluctant to talk about it, so you already get an idea that it's a sore point, you know, yeah. remembering his childhood. And something he hasn't been able to get past. I definitely don't think he has, and it's definitely affecting his parenting style. Yeah. He deeply loves Sophie and wants a better childhood for her, and here they are on this holiday, and he's trying to make this the best time. He keeps saying, like, this is going to be fun, this is going to be yeah. fun, we want this to be fun. But I think he makes a lot of mistakes, despite the fact that he's trying his best. Mm -hmm. She wants to go up and sing. You can see at first she's excited, hoping yeah. the dad to come down yeah. and kind of like, hey, we're going to have fun. And she realizes that he's not coming down, is he? And then she ends up finishing the song on her own and you can just see her emotions just kind of like going from the initial excitement to just that disappointment of yeah. like, why aren't you coming? Sophie goes up really needing her dad in that moment to be there for her and you can tell the whole time she's just like why are we here? What are we doing? He doesn't allow Sophie to process the reality that is their lives. Mm -hmm. Sophie clearly knows that they are struggling financially mm -hmm. and he always just sweeps it under the rug like he never wants to talk about it. Um, <sighs> How could that My be? God! This hour? This bloody hour! The hour is late yet. Hello? Hello? Lord, such a waste. <laughs> she alludes to her knowing that they're struggling financially. You know, we could get you singing lessons if you wanted to learn to sing. Trying to tell me I can't sing? No, I'm just saying anyone can learn if they put in the work. Stop doing that. Doing what? Offering to pay for something when I know you don't have the money. I know you can't afford to see him, yeah. so why are you promising that? You can see that he's really hurt by yeah. this because you're a parent and you want to be able to provide for your kids. Yeah. You want your kids to see you as someone who can provide for yeah. them and support them and give them security. And when your kid very clearly sees that you can't, yeah. that really hurts. It and kind of pulls back the curtain of the, the, yeah. the situation. First of all, I understand that being a parent is damn hard, mm -hmm. okay? I know it's hard to know what are the right things to tell your kids, yeah. what aren't the right things to tell your kids. But if you have a child yeah. who's as perceptive as this girl is, and she already knows that there are financial issues, yeah. you can just be honest. And not, first of all, promise things that you can't yeah. afford. Have a child-friendly discussion about mm -hmm. it, about that reality. Because if you don't do that, you kind of make the kid feel like she's crazy, or you create an adult who tends to believe that if you see something that's uncomfortable for other people, just yeah. 
look away and don't yeah. bring it up, yeah. even though it's affecting me negatively. Yeah. And I don't think that's really fair for the kid. A kid should be allowed to bring things up. If there are issues at home, she should be allowed to bring it up. He's thinking he's protecting her. But the fact that he's not acknowledging what she's just said, her reality, everyone's reality. It's like, let's ignore the elephant in the room. Yeah. That's unfair. She feels like, well, you're kind of making fun of my bad singing, but like you were supposed to come help me. And so I started to like lose, you know, enjoyment and energy for doing it because I was getting sad and it wasn't fun anymore. I stopped caring because you were not having a moment with me. Exactly. It was more of just us singing the song together. I it's wanted not about my me dad. Just doing it well. Exactly. Yeah. You get yourself out of whatever hangups you have. Yeah. You gotta step up for your kid. And he didn't do that there. Yeah. I end up feeling like she carries a lot of the emotional weight in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of kids do that, especially if you're someone who's as sensitive and emotionally mature as this girl is. Mm -hmm. She very clearly is. Last night, time for a dance. I don't dance. Sophie. I never ever dance. Okay, I'm dancing with you. I told you. I love to dance. At the end, he wants to dance. Yeah. Initially, she's like, no, I don't really want to dance. And then he, come on, come on, let's have yeah. fun. And then she ends up going and dancing with him yeah. and they end up having fun. And that's not fair because yeah. there isn't really that reciprocity in mm -hmm. that situation. At the end of the night, he gets drunk. Yeah. Yeah. And Sophie doesn't have a way to get in. Is sleeping at the hotel lobby until the guy who works there lets her in. And then on top of that, he shows up after that drunken stupor, which he ends up getting something, something happening to his shoulder, yeah. which she notices later yeah. and passes out on her bed. So she's obviously then witnessing her dad in this kind of state. Yeah. And he says to her, Sorry, I passed out in your bed. Bye. She's like, it's okay. And he's like, no, it's not okay. You know, which I thought was great. Okay, let's keep that going. <laughs> yeah. But then he doesn't go into detail. And she's like, yeah. it's okay. And those kinds of kids who say things like, it's okay. You know that that kid has taken on that responsibility yeah. of I'm responsible for everyone's emotions. She's yes. so attuned to his emotions and yeah. the fact that he's disappointed in his own life. And it's okay. Forget yeah. about it. The very fact that they've gotten to that point where she's the one who's always consoling him or understanding yeah. and brushing her needs aside. Yeah. That is very unhealthy. No matter how much he loves her. Her. He doesn't realize how damaging the relationship yeah. is for her. Uh, it's a one-way thing. He'll ask her all these questions, some of which are pretty personal, and she'll answer them. She'll yeah. be like, yeah, I kissed this boy, you know, not exactly on the cheek, it got a little more, you know, and he's like, you can ask me about if he's taking any drugs, I want you to always be able to tell me this stuff. But when she's asking him things that aren't even as personal, he just wants to avoid it or laugh it off or change the subject. You know, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything as you get older, you know? Whatever parties you go to, boys you meet, drugs you take. Dad! No, I'm serious, so I've done it all and you can too. I just want you to promise me that you'll talk to me about it, okay? Okay, but I'm never gonna do any of that anyway. Yeah, so that's okay too. You know when you grow up, you can tell me anything. And I'm like, do you not see how this yeah. is inconsistent? Because you're not actually opening yourself up. Mm -hmm. You say to your kid that yeah. you can talk to me about anything. And again, like you're saying, when she asks him a lot of questions, there's a lot of shutting her down. I can see that he struggles a lot with sharing mm -hmm. with her. He's probably kind of like re-traumatizing of his own experience right. and disappointments. Yeah. Like when Sophie asks, hey, you know, at 11, where did you think you'd be yeah. at your age? Yeah. That's something that he is very disappointed in. Yeah. When you were 11, what did you think you would be doing now? Hello? What did you think you would be doing now? Go on, so turn it off now, okay? So when she asks him these questions, we understand yeah. how hard it is. You know, I think all of us can relate to- A lot of embarrassment to... and shame on yeah. his end for like feeling like inadequate. inadequate towards his daughter. Yeah. yeah. On top of the fact that she's so perceptive yeah. of the fact that, you know, times are rough. And there's this feeling once you leave where you're from, like where you grew up, that mm, you don't totally belong there again. Not really. But Edinburgh's never, never felt like I really did belong there. They're having that 
conversation about his feelings towards Scotland, where he's from, right? right? And I'm like, this conversation is way too deep right. for a kid like yeah. this. Yes, you have a very insanely deep kid, yeah. but she's still a kid. Yeah. I think sometimes there are those kids that seem to be less mature than the other yeah. kids. And the less mature kids are mostly allowed to be kids. Mm -hmm. And then the more mature kids become like the third parent. Yeah, he maybe thinks that he needs to go deeper or more real than she was actually hoping for and vice versa. It's like other times she'll ask, you know, certain things and he just won't even be able to respond. Like again, with the, where were you hoping to be when you were 11? What were you thinking? And then he just won't even respond and he'll just change the subject or do something that annoys her, like starts dancing or the Tai Chi. Oh my God, he's doing some real slow motion ninja moves. Why is he so weird sometimes? Times. And maybe that's hard when you become a divorced or separated parent. Or parent it's hard to know when you're going too far or, or exactly. you know, where the where the line is. It's hard to know where the line is. It does help to kind of bounce these things off your partner being like, I had this conversation with our kid. It went this way. You know, how, how do you think that would have, you know, and then they can kind of be like, I don't know if that would have really been right or fair to throw yeah. on the kid. When you are a single parent or if you are separated, your kids really kind of take over as your spouse inadvertently. Nobody's trying for this to happen, but mm -hmm. looking at the relationship that they have and mm -hmm. how emotionally attuned Sophie is. Mm -hmm. For example, Sophie knows about the dad's failed business ventures. Yeah. He talks about, yeah, me and this other friend of mine, we're trying something different. And yeah. Sophie's just kind of like, I've seen this before. Yeah. You've said this to me before and it's failed and I don't even want to hear this. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, she's 11. No kid should know yeah. that her dad's business ventures are failing. Why yeah. are you telling, exposing yeah. her to these things? Yeah. Don't you ever feel like you've just done a whole amazing day and then you come home and feel tired and down and it feels like your bones don't work, they're just tired and everything is tired, like you're sinking. I don't know, it's weird. We're here to have a good time, eh? Right, we'll go get a nice dinner and we'll get an early night, yeah? Yes. Let's go. You can see that he's worried and unhappy about how lonely his kid is. Yeah. He recognizes this yeah. and it makes him feel bad. But instead of sitting down and saying, honey, okay, let's talk about it. What is yeah. it exactly? What is the source of this fatigue? We can stay in. We can yeah. just order in and have a talk about what, what's going on and get past it. Instead, he's like, hey, no, we're here to have a good time. Yeah. What is that? That is dismissing a kid's emotions. It's not letting a kid process this sad thing that's happening. It's not teaching a kid that it's okay to yeah. face negative emotions. I think there was an element of wanting to be open to your kid, which I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love parents who try to be open, but I feel like, of course, unfortunately, we're human and we don't always get it right. And it's hard to know, mm -hmm. especially when you come from a family like he clearly came from, which was not supportive of yeah. him. So he never actually saw any kind of modeling yeah. for good parenting. So it would, of course, be hard for him yeah. to actually parent his own kid and get it right. This guy's fighting for his life. In terms of trying to be a good dad, I will, as much as I'm here, I am criticizing <laughs> a lot, but I can see that he's actually making yeah. an effort. I can't see myself before it, to be honest. Surprised I made it to 30. I don't know if I'll make it to 40. Yeah. I didn't even think I'd make it to 30. Yeah. You can see that he's really sad. He's crying a lot. Mm -hmm. Personally, I feel like he ends up taking his life just because of that note. We see Sophie older in her apartment watching videos and kind of thinking about the dad. I just got this whole sense that the dad took his life and that's where that's, there's that note that so she- The only thing she has left are like the videos that he took of her yeah, on that vacation. Yeah, the video. And even that note, my God, it was so bare. Even if you write a in-depth letter, there's still gonna be unanswered questions, but yeah, yeah. like- Just say, just like I came from try. this. Yeah. yeah, just try. Later this kid will read it as an adult and they'll understand this much more than Sophie. Yeah. Maybe you leave it for someone and say, give this to Sophie when she's 30 or yeah. something like that. This is a kid. She literally yeah. went around and talked yeah. to every single person there and said, hey, it's my dad's birthday. Yeah. When he gets up to the top, can you yeah. all of us sing for him? And he's looking down yeah, and he's, he's looking really looking sad. Happy. Yeah, He doesn't not, look happy. But yeah. I think in my mind, when I saw that, yeah. I felt like that is a parent who sees my child is trying to make me happy. Yeah. And I think there is a sadness that he carries for realizing how much emotional work his yeah. child is doing yeah. for him. And how little he can do for her that he wants to be able to do for exactly. her. Exactly. I mean, even at the end, when she's going back on the plane, she's 
goofing around while he's filming her, yeah. still trying to like leave it on a good note, leave, yeah. him, make him smile before she goes. When you go to a hotel, there's the luxury suite and there's just like... The economy version. I booked a room with two beds, but we've only got the one here. Yeah, okay, well, I paid for it and um, it was confirmed by the travel agency. That's all you can do. Okay, it's a good job. There we go. Oh, we have to be then. There are amenities that are afforded to people who pay more and other people just kind of like get the scraps of what the hotel offers. Yeah. And so she's aware of this. The older kids, they have these yellow bands around and she asks, what is that? What's that? Uh, it's an all-inclusive thing, so you can get as much as you want of anything. It was just that kind of reminder again that my dad can't afford to do this. Other kids have these mm -hmm. opportunities that I don't have. And it's like this constant battle as a parent, my yeah. God, to be a good parent, to cocoon your kid and not to expose your kid to the hardships in their lives. You can try hard to a degree, get some success, but there's always other circumstances that you cannot control that will tell your kid exactly what it was you're trying to cocoon her from, which is why I think it becomes even more important for your dad to have a conversations around finances thing, which I think if you manage to get it right and have a conversation about the fact that, well, we're not as well off as those other kids, this is how things work, then she's not going to feel as downtrodden as I think she does when she's in that situation, seeing the other kids just order whatever they want. Truly, I think he had a lot of demons. You could really see he was trying so hard. And every time when Sophie's like, "Well, you know, we can't afford it," or "Oh, you know, it's not gonna work," yeah. you could just see him, his spirit just yeah, just break. Crushed. Yeah, yeah. I think when you've had a tough time in life and haven't gotten to where you want to get, and you're still struggling, when you have a kid, it becomes even mm -hmm. harder. Because then your failures or your insecurities are reflected back at you constantly. Yeah, every day. Them. Yeah. Through them and through what you can and can't give. Yeah. A lot of parents will be like, well, I put you through school, I put food on the table, I had this. But there's so much more. When you hear of someone's parents forgetting their birthday yeah. at 11, like yeah. they could be living in a mansion. But if your parents are forgetting your birthday at 11, you know there are issues there that are so big. Because for me, I don't think parenting is about what your parents are doing in terms of like putting you through school and putting food on the table. Yeah. If you were an orphan, your, the state would provide your that. Your kid is still starving for... A Attunement. Safety and attunement. Connection to Connection that. to yeah. your kid. Your kid depends on you to make them feel good about themselves, yeah. to be able to learn how to manage their own lives. And if your parent is checked out, like the dad's parents seem to have been, it's going to be brutal for you in life, even without a kid. It's going to be hard to become an adult and you're going to be 10 steps behind everyone else. Other people who got the kind of love that the state can't give. A lot of parents forget that just food and paying for school, yeah. that's not enough. That was the devastating thing for me here with this man man who loved his daughter so much and he's trying his best even with him struggling financially he's taking her on holiday with whatever he can afford he doesn't order ice cream for example they go to that rug store and they they like the certain rug but you know you can see he's not buying it if you're a parent we feel for you we know it's hard if you're a kid we feel for you it's we hard. know it's hard if you're someone that works at a resort like that we feel for you we know yeah, it's hard we know to it's deal hard. with a lot of annoying or sad people that's about it that's yeah. all i have to say that's all we have to say that's some thoughts we had on after sun let us know what you thought about mm -hmm. what we had to say share your thoughts on our thoughts in the comments down below till next time though it's a wrap bye Peace. It's nice that we share the same sky. What do you mean? Well, like, sometimes at playtime, I look up to the sky, and if I can see the sun, then I think about the fact that we can both see the sun, so even though we're not actually in the same place and we're not actually together, we kind of are in a way.